Welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people for your Wednesday, July the 5th. Uh, so, uh, something interesting with the with the Vegas Golden Knights. So, the Stanley Cup, of course, the tour where everybody gets the cup. Uh, your coaches, your staff, the players, everybody gets their day with the cup. Well, before they get their day with the cup, the Vegas Golden Knights management decided to get the names engraved on the cup first. This apparently is the first time this has ever happened. Uh, usually the cup gets engraved uh, with those names in the fall uh, after the tour with the cup. Uh, this is actually a really smart move. Uh, Tom Pritchard, the keeper of the cup, has said he hopes it happens every year. I got to agree. I think that's a great idea. Just, I mean, think about it. You have the Stanley Cup, you have your day with the cup, and being able to show people, go, here's my name right here. That's pretty cool. So uh, this is a good move, and I, I had to make mention that this was decided by Vegas. This is not an NHL decision. This is not Gary Bettman doing something for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, this is the team saying, we'll get this engraved now. Um, and so, yeah, uh, they'll get the cup uh, this this weekend, it looks like, is likely. Uh, Bruce Cassidy's taking it to a Massachusetts school next week, so has to have it then. Um, I do have a replica down here if he wants it, but there's no names on it, and it's much smaller than the real thing, so I don't think that's going to work. But anyways, call me Bruce if you want it. Anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, the fact that it's usually engraved in the fall, we'll see if it goes back to that next year. I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess that now that Vegas has done it this way, other teams are going to think the same as I am. Why wasn't this always the case? This is, should have been, This should have been the default. Get it engraved first, and then go on tour with it, right? So let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, Reinbacher has signed his entry-level contract with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, he is impressed so far amongst the rookies. I find it interesting, too, uh, the reporting that, you know, uh, social media wasn't very nice to him when Montreal drafted him fifth. Social media is social media. It's just kind of that's the way that works. Uh, I think Reinbacher uh, could very well end up being in the NHL sooner rather than later. Uh, he has the size. He has the skill. And there's no reason to think he won't be a solid defenseman. Now, will we look back 5, 10 years from now and talk about who they might have been able to have at 5? Maybe. But for right now, that's not the concern. The concern is making sure Reinbacher's good to go. And so far, it looks like that's going to be the case. Uh, Julian Gauthier has returned to New York. This time, he'll play for the Islanders uh, on a two-year deal worth $787,500. So, I believe he's played with the Islanders before Gauthier returns. Uh, two-year deal there. And so, uh, yeah, some depth additions by the New York Islanders today, including Kuhlman and Pino, who have both signed one-year deals, both for a league minimum of $775,000. So an extra $12,500 for Gauthier, but this is just depth moves. I like Kuhlman as a fourth line slash 13th forward option. Gauthier on the fourth line, solid. And so we'll see how it all turns out for the Islanders. But uh, Lou Lamorello has been relatively quiet. I, I think he believes that they're, they're close. Whether they are or they're not, that seems to be the approach he's taking. So far to the offseason, although there's been a lot of discussions about who they might be in on and which big name they could go out and get, so far it just hasn't happened. Uh, Arizona, so Logan Cooley decided not to sign with the team and it came out shortly after the rejected vote in Tempe. Uh, he has said, though, he has no intention to wait in the NCAA until he becomes a free agent because four years after your draft, you become a free agent. Um, but he, he intends to play for the Coyotes. He's not going to stay in the NCAA. He's going to basically take it this year in the NCAA and then see where he's at in his development. Could very well sign with the Coyotes next year. Uh, Cooley is a huge part of the future for the Arizona Coyotes. There are a lot of very good prospects for Arizona that are in their, in, in their, their, their pipeline. And then they've got a lot of good young players already on the roster. So Arizona, they're the butt of everybody's jokes for the last while. I'm going to say while because I'm thinking of how far back, but we'll just say while. And I get the feeling that that's not going to last that much longer. Yes, we will have the discussion about where the team should play and which location makes the most sense. But the actual franchise on the ice, I think, is moving in the right direction. Uh, Rasmus Asplund. One-year, two-way deal for him with the Florida Panthers. Uh, Asplund bounced around a little bit now over the last 12 months. We'll see if he's found a home for himself in Florida. Florida's very good at getting players buying low and selling high on them. And so we'll see if that happens with Asplund as well. Uh, plenty of players on that roster that went all the way to the finals that they got for relatively cheap or they won deals on or they signed them when nobody was paying much attention or maybe even claimed them on waivers. So we'll see what Asplund does for them. 
Uh, Lauko, a player who's impressed Bruins fans with his play over the last season or so. Uh, Two-year extension for him. Uh, it is a one-way deal in year two. It is a two-way deal in year one with the Boston Bruins. Uh, Lauko, I think, has some, some good potential. He's a depth forward. But with Boston right now needing centers, that's... That's where I'm looking to see if they're if they're going to be able to add anybody. And again, the salary cap does make that difficult, as it does for a lot of teams, including the New York Rangers, which brings us to Vlad Tarasenko. So the Tarasenko rumors were out there a couple days ago. Shayna Goldman says he's going to the Canes. David Pagnotta answers with the Canes and the Sens have made good offers. And it sounded like this might have been coming from his agent. And now I think it was definitely coming from his agent because Tarasenko's rejected all offers. Every offer gone. Everything starts fresh. Fired his agent, uh, has got new representation. And what Larry Brooks is saying about this is he wanted to stay with the Rangers, despite the fact that the Rangers don't have cap space. So now he's got new representation. Everything starts from zero. And we'll see where Tarasenko ends up. Uh, Tarasenko is an interesting one that I think with the right team, and if he can stay healthy, he could put up 25 to 30 goals again. Uh, he does have a good shot, and if he can find that consistency, he could be a 30-goal scorer. I could also see him going to a team and scoring 15. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, now that he's changed representation, what happens. Uh, this doesn't feel totally dissimilar to last summer with John Klingberg. Uh, Klingberg had you know, plans for a long-term contract. It didn't pan out. Uh, he ended up signing the one-year deal in Anaheim. We'll see where Tarasenko ends up. Uh, I did the video this morning on Chicago. Chicago has tons of cap space. They could use another winger. Uh, that would be out there. But again, it's going to be up to Vlad whether he wants to sign a one-year deal and wait for next year's free agent market or if he wants to sign a long-term deal. And if he wants to sign with the Rangers, he's probably going to have to sign for a lot less money than he might want on the market. So it's going to be... Uh, I'll be curious to see what happens with Tarasenko and how long it takes for him to sign now that he's changed agents. It could be today. could be a week. Uh, if he if he's saying I want to sign with and he's got a very short list of teams and those teams don't have the cap space to sign him, it could take a while. But you're better off making sure you get it right rather than just taking a contract wherever. If he didn't want to play in Carolina, that's up to him. That's that's totally up to him. And even if they were offering him, apparently the rumor was it would be a five point one million dollar a year contract. Maybe it's not about the money for him and it's about where he wants to play. So. We'll see what happens. Now, this is going around uh, the, the Twitter universe right now, which is working right now. Um, the city of Toronto says Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment is over a million behind on their taxes. So people are jumping on this and going, ha ha, ha ha, see, Toronto. Remember when Arizona, totally different. Absolutely, completely, and totally different because this has nothing to do with the Maple Leafs organization. Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment <clears throat> owns the Toronto Maple Leafs but this is not about the Toronto Maple Leafs. So this is kind of a, a complicated setup, and it sounds like it's a huge miscommunication between the government and the team. Uh, basically, this is taxes on Bank of Montreal, BMO Field, right? Uh, so Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment counters, they do not own BMO Field. So they have leases in place. Um, the the Tor Toronto FC, their soccer team, plays there. The Toronto Argonauts play there as well. Uh, but they're saying they don't owe the property taxes because they were tax exempt. They're leasing. Now, they were tax exempt, but there's a, a, a corporation that basically decided they weren't tax exempt anymore because of 2016 renovations they made to expand BMO Field. So basically saying once they expanded it and they made changes to it, well, now they're responsible for the property taxes. It's owned by the city of Toronto. So that's where things get complicated too. The actual owners of the city of Toronto. Um, and so... It's just, it's a miscommunication between MLSE and the city, uh, which basically the city saying, you guys owe us all this money. The team is saying, or well, not the, not the team. I need to be careful here. The company's saying, no, we don't. There's nothing to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Nothing to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs building. Toronto Maple Leafs absolutely caught up in any taxes they owe. Uh, it is an absolutely, totally 100% opposite situation to what was going on with the Coyotes. Because the Coyotes knew they owed, them, they owed money. They didn't pay it. Um, and then they finally paid it when they got locked out of their building. Toronto's case, nobody's locking them out of BMO Field because that's how BMO Field generates revenue uh, through the Argonauts and through Toronto FC. Uh, but yeah, the argument over who owes what, uh, this is going to go on. They're going to try to work this out with the city. I would think they do. But again, I wanted to put this in the video because 
it's being played off by some people as, see, Toronto Maple Leafs are doing the same thing. It's completely different. I think it's the fact that it's MLSE. If this was like, say, uh, Toronto Arena Ownership Group, I don't think anybody would make a big deal. But since Maple Leafs is the first two words in that, people go, ah, Maple Leafs aren't paying their bills. Nothing to do with that. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.